Hello. Under Secretary General, Foreign and Defense Ministers, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, This is the third UN Defense Peacekeeping Ministerial I have attended, but the first in my home soil. I am very proud to speak here as an American. I am patriot, I love my country, and I want to see it thrive. I also believe in an America that this part of an international community. Countries working together on an equal footing is how we reduce the risk of conflict. It is how we avoid the need to send men and women of our militaries to fight and sacrifice overseas. The UN was set up for that purpose. As a way of resolving differences peacefully, supporting each other's prosperity, and extending universal rights and freedoms. It is in all our interests for the UN to be made effective, brought closer to the lives of citizens, and not ever misused. To a dip deeper level, a country that believes that all men and women are born free and equal cannot be true to itself if it doesn't defend those principles for all people, wherever they live, regardless of their circumstances, and no matter how desperate their struggle. In fact, our support should be strongest where rights are threatened the most. We seem incapable of upholding minimum standards of humanity in many parts of the world. But this comes at a time when humankind is richer and more technologically advanced than ever before is all the more painful. Eighteen years ago, when I first began working with the UN Refugee Agency, there were just upon under 20 million displaced people worldwide, and the numbers were falling. Today, there are over 65 million people displaced, and the numbers are rising. More countries are experiencing some form of violent conflict today than any time in the last 30 years. UN peacekeepers, now comprised of the second largest group of forces deployed overseas and are often required to serve where there is little or no peace to be kept. Against this backdrop, it is easy to dismiss our institutions as flawed or ineffective. My hope, instead, is that young people, in particular, feel inspired to join the effort to improve them to join the men and women in the arena, to far appraise President Roosevelt, who strive, are striving to do deeds and whose faces are marred by dusts and sweat and blood. In that regard, I want to express my respect for men and women who serve as peacekeepers and for those who have been killed and injured. The protection of civilians is a primary responsibility of governments. When UN peacekeepers are, de are deployed, it is usually where a government is unable or unwilling to protect civilian life. Those United Nations missions often represent the last and only hope for millions of people facing daily threats for their safety and their basic rights. The need for peacekeeping troops to have the best possible training and equipment and the highest standards of personal conduct becomes obvious when measured against that weighty responsibility. That is why this meeting is so important, because it is in the hands of the governments you represent. To enable peacekeeping to live up to its ideals and the needs of our time. So, as you discuss how to strengthen UN peacekeepers and give peacekeepers the capabilities they need to operate in today's dangerous environments, I ask you to take time to consider the questions from the perspective of women. Around the world, there are countless examples of women rising, taking leadership, 
taking their destiny into their own hands, inspiring us all. But women and girls are still the majority of victims of war. They are over half of all refugees, and the vast majority of victims of rape and other sexual and gender-based violence. Women are the absolute epicenter of modern conflict and the worst possible sins. But more often than not, they are still on the outside, looking in when it comes to political, politics, and decisions about their futures. If we went by the principle that those affected by a problem should be in charge of determining the solution, then the majority of the world's peace neg negotiators, foreign ministers, and diplomats will be women. We all knew the reality. Thank you.